So welcome everyone to Bombing 101. Uh, this Dojo class is going to teach you general information about bombing, uh, bombing rules, uh, etiquettes, and you know how to fly in a bomber fleet or just bomb by yourself uh, solo. We're going to be first going over some general information, then we're going to do some practice bombing runs um, just here in GE. So uh, first thing about bombs, some rules about bombing. Uh, obviously never bomb friendlies, even if there's lots of enemies around the friendly, uh, unless you've like gotten permission. Uh, don't bomb enemy fleets that come to GE if uh, we have a friendly FC forming up to fight them, because bombing tends to drive away content. So we want to avoid that if possible. Uh, don't try to bomb if you don't have a Kovops cloak, because first of all, it's just not going to work. But also, you run the risk of decloaking your fellow bombers, which is basically instant death for all of you. And lastly, always use electron bombs. This is just a uh, standard that we have in Brave. If we all coordinate the same bomb type, it will avoid them destroying each other which I will talk more about later, but just remember to always use electron bombs. Uh, then for, as for the ships you fly, if you're just bombing, literally any bomber is pretty much the same. The only difference really between them is that they're each bonus to a different bomb damage. So since you want to be shooting EM bombs, technically the purifier is going to do the most damage. Uh, the other bombers would probably mostly be used for their torpedoes on a you know, other types of fleets. But of course, you can still bomb with an unbonus bomb, it just does a little less damage. Uh, the only thing you technically need on a bomber is Kovops Cloak and a bomb launcher with a bomb in it. Everything else that you fit on a bomber is pretty much going to be to help you survive because after you launch your bomb, if you die before the bomb explodes, your bomb just won't explode, it'll disappear. So you need to survive uh, until the bomb explodes, which if you follow the instructions in the later part of this class, uh, you'll have no problem. You'll never die. Let's see. That's kind of the theoretical stuff. So everyone go ahead and undock here. I'm going to talk a little bit about cloaking. So bombers use covert ops cloaks, which is a unique type of cloak in that it's the only one that you can warp while cloaked. Um, and since you can warp while cloaked, in a stealth bomber, basically, you should never, ever be uncloaked unless you're bombing. Uh, there's just no reason to ever be uncloaked. Now, some rules about the cloak, and this applies to all cloaks, but you cannot cloak if you're within 2,000 meters of something. That's players, ships, structures, uh, loot containers, NPCs, anything. You have to be at least 2,000 meters away. Uh, if you try to cloak, it just it'll fail. And if you're already cloaked and something moves within 2K of you, you will get decloaked. Uh, so that is kind of feeds into what I was saying earlier about don't try to bomb if you don't have cloak cloak because the biggest threat to a bomber fleet is someone in the fleet messing up and uncloaking because that will instantly uncloak everyone else. Uh, for the covert ops cloaks, if you are cloaked and you're within 2,000 meters of someone else who is also cloaked, you will not decloak each other. But then, if one person decloaks, you know everyone will. So I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate this real quick. I'm gonna warp us off to this tack over here. Once we land, I want everybody to pick a random direction and cloak up, or pick a random direction, MWD on, you know, move a little bit away and cloak up. So just starburst a little bit and then cloak up. You might notice that after you cloak up, you know, you can't uh, MWD or use anything else. Obviously you can't use any modules while you're cloaked. Also keep in mind that you cannot cloak if someone's targeting you, even if it's an NPC. Nope. Uh, while you're cloaked, nobody can see you. So I'll, I'll show you this in a second, but 
Oh, um, Gula, since you're not in the bomber, can you flag exempt real quick for this part? Uh, flag exempt. Go to your fleet window, uh, hamburger menu in the top left, and click flag exempt from fleet warp. All right, so now everybody, all the bombers take this warp. And just don't touch anything. Don't decloak or anything. Just take the warp and, and don't move afterward. So I've warped us all to the same spot. There's now like 12 bombers sitting exactly where you're sitting, but you don't know. Uh, which, you know, is a good thing, because then also the enemies don't know. So now I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to accidentally deactivate my cloak. And that's just decloaked everybody. Actually, where is everyone else? Okay, well, I, the reason for that probably is that when I warped us, uh, whenever you warp somewhere, you would land anywhere within 2,500 of it. So if you land 2,500 away, you won't get decloaked since decloak range is only 2k. So, I mean, that, that didn't exactly work perfectly, but you saw the first couple people get decloaked. Uh, in larger fleets, it's almost always guaranteed to decloak the whole fleet if you accidentally decloak. Alright, uh, so that's pretty much it for cloaking, uh, yeah. Executioner, go ahead and flag accept fleet warp again, and I'm going to warp us to our practice spot. Alright, so I'm going to warp us to my alt who I have set up. Uh, Gula, if you missed that, warp to 5 ohm. Yeah, just everyone, everyone now warp to 5 ohm if you didn't get this warp. Okay, so everybody save. Actually, everybody approach me. Approach forum. Uh, get to me at zero. Once you're on me at zero, save this spot. Save this bookmark as like bomb tack or something. Props off, please don't bump me too hard. All right, so this is gonna be the spot that we're gonna bomb from. And then, now everybody warp to the Saber of five ohm and save that location as well. Name that bookmark something like uh, bomb warp out or bomb warp off. Uh, warp to 5 ohm, the saber of 5 ohm. Again, as before, approach him so you kind of get a, uh, an accurate bookmark. Vader, you coming? All right, cool. Uh, we've kind of started. We're a decent way through. You can definitely still come uh, do the bombing, like observe the bombing portion. All right, now everybody warp back to your first tack, the bomb tack. And make sure you uh, switch to an overview where you can see cargo containers. Uh, I've dropped one here, and that's going to be our target this time.
Uh, go and join the fleet and warp to Forum. We're in a deep safe. So I'm going to... Uh, yes, G. I'm going to explain now pretty much what the bomb does. Everyone hover over, but do not click your bomb launcher right now. Uh, yes, here, let me get back to it. Yeah, that's fine. So, 4 ohm is at the warp off, and 5 ohm is at the bomb tack. Make sure you have both of these locations saved. Right, so yeah, everybody hover over, but don't uh, click the bomb launcher. You should see a red circle appear in space, and that indicates where the bomb is going to go. Uh, when you click the bomb launcher, the bomb will be deployed from your ship. It'll move in the same direction that you're facing. It'll move at a set speed, no matter what speed you're going at. Uh, let me look at the numbers here exactly. Oh yeah, you should always be on a tactical camera, it's the best camera. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so damage bombs, typical damage bombs, uh, when you launch it, it'll move at 2500 meters per second, and it'll fly for 12 seconds, which means it's going to travel exactly 30 kilometers and then explode. And damage bombs have a radius of 15 kilometers, so, you know, if you hover over the the bomb launcher again, you can verify that you know it explodes the center of the sphere is at exactly 30 and the radius is exactly 15. Alright, I'm gonna warp my bomber back to the start point. So the gist of bombing is that you need to be about 30 kilometers away from your target. You align to them, moving at a very slow speed, and then you launch your bomb and immediately warp off. Um, and there's, if all goes well, it'll travel for 12 seconds uh, and then explode. But there's lots and lots of things that can cause your bomb run to fail. The first is that if you die, your bomb will just disappear. Second, if your bomb contacts anything in space, like physically touches something, it could be a ship, it could be a stargate, it could be a station, and just anything. If it physically touches anything, it will disappear. That's not the explosion radius, just if the bomb itself, if the projectile touches something, it dies. Um, enemies can fit a module called a defender launcher, which uh, it's like a little missile, and they click it and it'll just destroy your bomb if it's too close to them. And lastly, bombs can also be damaged. So if someone else's bomb hits your bomb, and it's not the same damage type, and I'll explain that real quick, everybody Click the electron bomb that I've just linked. Go to the attributes tab and scroll all the way down. So you'll see that a, a typical bomb does 6,400 6, EM damage, but it also has 99.8% EM resist. That means an electron bomb takes very, very little damage from other electron bombs, but since it has no resist to any other type, it'll take full damage from other uh, bomb types, which means like a single thermal bomb can destroy every single electron bomb in its radius. That's why you have to coordinate bomb types. However, you'll notice that it's actually 99.8 and not 100%. So electron bombs still can be destroyed by other electron bombs, and the magic number is about 7. When you, if you get more than 7 bombs exploding in the same uh, area, then they'll start to destroy each other. So typically bomb wings are separated into squads of six or seven or eight to be safe. Yeah, so that's that's all the things that can go wrong uh, with your bomb. But now I'm going to sort of give a demonstration of uh, what you actually want to do when you bomb. So as I said before, I'm going to align to the the warp off point, the one that's 550 kilometers away, and I'll explain why that is in a second. But I'll align there. 
I'm going to hover over my bomb launcher to ensure that the red sphere is uh, including, like it's going to hit my target. I'm going to launch my bomb and then immediately warp off. So uh, take a look here, I'm going to be starting this bomb run. If all goes well, this cargo container should be destroyed. So bomb is out, I've warped off. And we're assuming that I was cloaked before I launched that bomb. So if that cargo container was an enemy, he has literally no time to react to me. And the cargo container is dead. So that's what a successful bomb run looks like. Uh, now I'm going to set up another container and you guys are going to do some practice on that. But this time we're going to do it, you know, for real. Like you guys are actually going to cloak. Actually, no, we'll do a dry run first. Yeah, you should definitely have a co-ops cloak. You, you have time to go fit one right now in time for the real run. Uh, just bring like two. Uh, J Dread, you have to auto, you have to decloak yourself. It won't automatically, it'll just say you can't do that while you're cloaked. All right, so new container is set up. Everybody make sure you're on the initial tack and not moving. Oh, I actually just realized we have more than like seven bombers, so some of your bombs might destroy each other, but it'll fine for a practice run. Um, all right, so now when I say go, everyone is going to align to the warp off point. And then when I say bomb, you're going to launch your bomb and immediately warp out, immediately warp to that point. You should already be aligned. So, you know, you'll warp off uh, instantly. And uh, warping off will not destroy your bomb. So, all right. So everybody now align to the warp off point, align to the warp off point. You have just maybe a one or two more seconds to get this. And bomb and warp off, bomb and warp off. Launch your bomb and warp off. Nice, 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 great. Warp off as soon as you can. Awesome. So yeah, I see, I see there was one bomb launched in a different direction. Make sure that you're aligned to the uh, warp out point before you launch your bomb. All right, so now everybody warp back to the first tech. That was a great, uh, pretty successful uh, dry run. You'll notice that you can't actually launch another bomb for quite a while. Uh, there's a reactivation to delay of, I think, one minute at base, just because it would be kind of OP if you can launch them repeatedly. So we'll have to wait for that to run out before we try again. Actually, it's two minutes. Um, also, anytime you launch a bomb, you'll immediately get an aggression timer, regardless of you know if you hit anything. Just as soon as you hit the bomb module, you'll get aggression. Let's see here. Uh, there's a reactivation delay of about five seconds. So normally you would already be at your warp out point before you can recloak up. But yes, you, uh, you would recloak as soon as you can. J Dread. I use the radio menu to warp out. So like I'm aligned out, I click my, click my bomb module and then radio menu, my warp out tech and warp to it. Or you can right click and warp to it in space. All right, so while we actually wait for that to run out, I'm gonna explain why we have that warp out point so far away. Um, the reason is for bubbles. Uh, usually, or not usually, but sometimes, the thing that you want to bomb is going to be sitting in a bubble. Or you might, uh, oh yeah, the thing you want to bomb might be sitting in a bubble, or uh, there might be a bubble between you and your warp out point. 
because of some stupid archaic way that CCP coded this game, if the destination that you're warping to is farther than 500 kilometers from the bubble, then it just ignores the bubble entirely and you can just warp freely. So I'm going to set up a bubble here just to demonstrate this to you guys. So bubbles up. We can pretend that like, you know, whatever you're trying to bomb is sitting smack dab in the middle of that bubble. So now everybody don't launch your bomb, but just align to your warp out point and warp to it. Do that now. Everybody warp to the uh, warp out point. You'll notice that you just pass straight through the bubble. Uh, you just totally ignored it because the warp out point is at least 500 kilometers away from the bubble. And go ahead and warp back to the start point. It should, yeah, but if, um, again, like if the, if your destination, oh, I forgot it would actually catch you on the way back, sorry about that. Uh, if your destination is farther than 500 kilometers from the bubble, you can just ignore the bubble for some reason. Oh yeah, if you're inside the bubble, you can't warp no matter what. But this is normally because it's in the middle of your path, it would block you, but since you know, you're know you warping far away, it doesn't matter. Mm. Alright, well, I mean, we're pretty much ready to do our uh, official run, I think. So... Once you get back to the starting tack, uh, burn off in a random direction again, cloak up, and then reapproach the tack. I would wait until everybody's cloaked up before you reapproach, and don't burn off too far, because once you cloak up, you can't MWD. Just uh, cloak up somewhere and reapproach the initial tack. I'll get this rolling once uh, once I don't see any bombers. Yeah, if you need to, you can warp off somewhere and cloak up and then warp back. Generally, when the FC needs to do this in a real bomb fleet, he'll tell you to starburst to a random celestial. Warp to it at 100 off. Bombers can warp while stealthed. Alright, uh, Moa, go ahead and- wait, where'd the Moa go? Ah, fair enough. I'm going to provide you a warp in, Moa. All right, Moa, go ahead and warp to four ohm. Cool. Yep, instant application to everything in the range, and uh, how much damage depends on the target's signature radius. The higher the target's signature radius, the more damage you do. So like against frigates, it won't do that much, but if you encounter like a frigate or a destroyer or someone and they turn their MWD on, which blooms their sig by 500%, you're going to do crazy damage to them. You can one-shot frigates and probably destroyers if they do that. That's why if you're ever in a fleet and someone launches bombs at you, uh, FC is going to tell you to cycle your props off like instantly as soon as you can. Which you should always have time to do because bombs take 12 seconds to explode and prop mods I don't think don't have 12 second cycles. 
All right, so the MOA is here. I'm going to set up a bubble here to do kind of a simulation. And I think everything is set up. All right, so by now, all of you should be cloaked and sitting on that initial tack at zero. And go ahead and actually, let's not all do this at once so you don't destroy each other's bombs. Um, you don't mind being potted, right, Moa? OK. Because uh, you will probably get potted. If the bomb destroys your ship, then the next bomb will kill your pod. Ooh, um, that's I mean, we do have 13 bombers. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, 91% plus your SIG radius. Well, hmm. <laughs> No, movement doesn't affect SIG radius. I mean, definitely make sure you have your prop off if you even have one, but I think you will survive. I think. Yeah, um, if you get potted, I will pay you. I mean, my clone's in L5, so I know how painful it is, but all right, so let's have, uh, if your character name starts with A through J, A through J, uh, you're going to be part of this run. Everyone else just uh, hold still. So A through J bombers, just go ahead and align to your warp out point. Once you're aligned, bomb and warp out. Uh, feel free to do that whenever you're ready. Oh, the bubble expired, whatever. Nice. Start warping out as, as soon as you can. It's crucial that you warp off instantly, or else they can target you and kill you. Oh, I also forgot that you might decloak the second group, but that's fine. All right, is that the whole first group done? It looks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's got, you're doing 9% damage because of his resists. Also, you're not even full flying because he's got a cruiser. I think bombs will only do full damage to like a, I don't think they even do full damage to battleships, do they? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> this is perfect. I mean, I don't want you to die. Uh, so second bomb group, go ahead and burn off a little bit again and cloak up and reapproach the first point. All right. Vader, go ahead and uh, cloak up and reapproach the initial point. All right. Uh, I assume you're all on the initial point at zero. So second group, go ahead and align out and bomb. Align out, bomb, and warp. Good first bomb. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Looks like all those bombs are landing on target. Uh, it was a little bit slow though. So if the enemies were in some fast lock and stuff like frigates or destroyers, they might have been able to uh, snap you down. So make sure that you're really, you know, doing everything as soon as possible. Like. Once you're aligned, just mash your decloak, mash your bomb launcher, and then mash warp out.
Yeah, I also, this is probably an important thing to make sure. Um, everyone should have their bookmarks visible in space when you're doing bombing runs. So if you don't, then hover over the, like your capacitor and health, the very outer circle should be like a sort of transparent circle around it. If you hover over that, it'll give you sensor overlay options. Um, make sure your sensor overlay is on and the personal bookmarks is turned on. And then you'll see like the, the blue bookmarks in space. And you can just right click that in space and align to or warp to. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I just always keep my game in tactical. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's it for bombing. You just have to watch your cloaking and make sure you have these bomb tacks set up. Obviously, bombing one's going to be a lot more difficult if you don't have this warp out tack set up because if you're not aligned to warp out tack, then after you bomb, you have to align to somewhere to warp and then warp out, which gives the enemies like several seconds to shoot at you. Uh, and honestly, most of the time you might have to do that. Like actual combat bombing, you might not have a warp out tack. You might just have to bomb and align out and hope that you can warp in time. Which is why some bombing fits have you know, warp core stabs, they have tank, they have burst jammers to help you escape after you launch your bomb. Uh, yeah, I mean if you can get a Yeah, so you can kind of roughly line stuff up behind them, uh, but you know you got to get pretty lucky with that because space is big. Uh, and yeah, so looks like the Mo is turning his invulns off. So feel free to if you have bombs left, want to do another practice run, go ahead and just launch your bomb at him. Practice uh, definitely practice, you know, decloaking, launching, and then warping off within two server ticks or so, like two seconds because that, that makes you completely invincible. Nothing can kill you in those two seconds unless they smart bomb you or something. You might have a, oh, don't warp to, don't warp to the MOA. Ooh, okay, looks like you survived, nice. Yeah, but don't warp to that, Corey, warp out, or JJ, warp out, JJ, warp out. Okay, looks like you survived that too. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, JJ, get out of there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, bombs kill everything indiscriminately, so you know, don't uh, don't warp into your bombs path. Uh, sorry, what was the question before that? Oh, yes. Uh, do you have torpedoes on that fit? Then what it might be is that it's a painter for the target so that it blooms their sig radius and makes them take more damage. Uh, I don't... Yeah, I mean, that kind of does make it easier to turn into a torpedo bomber fit, but also, I mean, it's just, you really shouldn't ever be target painting anything in a bomber unless you're like a support sitting off to the side and not actually bombing. Uh, personally, on my bomb bomber fits, I run a little bit of tank, and so an extender, an invuln field, and a burst jammer. So if something manages to point me, I can maybe jam them off and warp out. But Target Painter, I, I guess, can work too. They're all pretty much the same. I mean, it's that's like asking what the best damage type is. They all do the same damage, move at the same speed. Um, but 
we you should just always use em always use electron because that's the standard for brave and if you use another damage type you'll probably blow up your friendly bombs which you know is bad oh i should also mention uh bombs can actually destroy bubbles so if you bomb at the center of a saber's bubble it will destroy the bubble you can use this sometimes to save i've used it once to save a friendly dread who was bubbled and trying to warp out just bomb on it at zero and bomb the bubble off of him and he warped uh, Oh yeah, uh, Goku usually when Tess runs it, they run shrapnel because they like hounds. Uh, just when you're bombing in Brave, use EM. Also, every bomber uh, FC will tell you exactly which bomb type to use, probably a dozen times. Uh... Yeah, torps don't interfere with each other, so you should just always use the one that your ship is bonus to. No, no, yeah, absolutely not. They are they are slow, they are squishy, and their damage fit, which is the torps, only applies well to basically battleships and up. So they're they will get destroyed by probably even a T1 frigate. Uh, I mean, if they're rapid light caracals, they'll they'll probably shred through the bombers too, unless you mean if you bomb them. Oh yeah, yeah. A coordinated wave of bombs can take out a lot of things. Nice. Yeah, I would say pretty much the worst things to bomb would be like assault frigates, because they're small, their sig radius is tiny, and you know, if you have to catch them with their pants down with a good bombing run, they can just hit their ADC and take no damage. Um, generally, bombing runs will be done against slower, more immobile, larger fleets. Yep. Yeah, I saw that battle report. That was pretty gnarly. J Dread Brave doesn't really do a lot of like bombing fleets. Uh, the most that usually happens is you know if a fleet comes through and we're not forming to fight them, there will be a couple dudes like, "Hey, you guys want to go bomb them?" And then you you form that up yourself. But we don't really do any fleets per se of bombs. Yeah, that's true. And torp bombing is a whole different beast. Generally, uh, well, blopsing you still want cloaks, but there's if you do a Goku fleet where you hunt capitals, uh, you just don't even fit a cloak. It's a whole other type of uh, stealth bomber fit. Uh, no, blops is not bombing. Blops is... Yeah, bomb discipline is going to be very important in a fleet. Uh, launching bombs when you're not supposed to will get your FC very mad. Oh, I guess I should mention the other types of bombs. There's a uh, focus void travel. It's pretty much this. Okay, so the difference between the focus void and damage is that focus void moves faster. Uh, has a slower duration, but it still balances out to move exactly 30 kilometers. But it also has only a 5 kilometer explosion radius. So you pretty much only use it on stationary targets, only capitals, 
uh, and it just once it hits, it drains out 15,000 gigajoules from the capacitor. Um, and there's also a void bomb, which I think moves about the same as a regular damage bomb. Explodes at I think also 15 kilometer radius, but it's meant for use against subcaps because it takes out 1,500 gigajoules from your capacitor. Uh, that can also be used pretty effectively against, you know, large fleets, but void bombs are usually not very rare, or they're, they're usually not very common. It's The reason for the 500 is to uh, ignore bubbles. If uh, there's no bubble, it just needs to be at least 150 away so you can warp. Anyone got any more questions? Uh, if you can find a volunteer, I mean, there's that MOA. Don't bomb people without permission. Hey, nice. <laughs> oh, I guess one other thing uh, useful is uh, generally, if a friendly cap is tackled, bombers can actually be surprisingly helpful because a lot of the times they'll be tackled and there'll be a bunch of frigates orbiting them at 500, scramming them. There'll be a bunch of bubbles right on top of them. There might be drones or fighters on them. So if you launch a bomb at the friendly capital, of course get their permission first. They'll probably be fine with it because to a capital, a bomb basically does not much damage at all. Um, and they would definitely welcome you clearing off you know, all their tackle, all the drones hitting them, all the fighters, all the bubbles. So like stealth bombers, bomb fit can be decent support for a tackled friendly cap. And that's pretty much all I got for this class. Uh, so if anyone, last call for any questions. Oh, uh, a smart, a smart bomb is like a module on a ship that doesn't consume ammo, but it just consumes capacitor. When you activate it, it damages everything in a range around you. And smart bombs can also destroy your bombs because they do damage. Uh, but it takes, I think it takes a, a, a couple cycles, depending on the size. Fun fact, smart bombs can also destroy missiles that are in flight. Yep, but it's, you know, it's obviously pretty hard to get a lot of them because missiles fly really fast compared to how fast your ship bombs. There used to be a... Uh, a strategy called firewalling where you get a smart bombing battleship between your fleet and the enemy missile fleet and you can actually like screen off a lot of the missiles I don't know how effective that actually was but heard of that yeah they could shoot the battleship but also if they shoot the battleship then you know a lot of the missiles are still gonna die to the bombs smart bombs Cool. So if there's no more questions, then that's going to be it for this class. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming.